Five Nursing Mnemonic to Help You Ace the NCLEX Series 2 Studying for the next generation NCLEX can be overwhelming, but one way to help retain what you study is through nursing mnemonic. In this video, we will dive into five more popular nursing mnemonic along with my rationales that will help you remember important information for your exam. Number one, side effects of vancomycin. Vancomycin does not have that many side effects, but when they're side effects, it sucks. Stating the obvious, but vancomycin is an antibiotic. How shocking. Nephrotoxicity is toxic that occurs to the kidneys. When kidney damage occurs, you're unable to get rid of excess fluid from the body. This explains why you would see the fluid edema. Shortness of breath would occur due to the fluid accumulating in the lungs. Elevated electrolytes occur because electrolytes are not leaving the body. There is also a lack of urinating and elevated blood pressure. Keep in mind that edema is usually associated with high blood pressure. Nephrotoxicity can be reversed if it's not too late. Ototoxicity is toxic that occurs to the ear. The inner ear is associated with hearing imbalance. If this is disrupted, then you would see symptoms of hearing loss and balance difficulty. Ototoxicity can be reversed or permanent, depending on how severe the damage is. Ringing in the ear, also known as tinnitus, is also a sign of hearing loss. Stop the medication administration immediately. Thrombophlebitis is the formation of a blood clot, causing inflammation and pain. In rare cases that elevating the site and cold or warm compresses does not work, then antibiotics are used to treat thrombophlebitis. This is ironic because an antibiotic can cause this in the first place. Let's go over an NCLEX practice question for vancomycin. NCLEX question number one. Nurse Gavin is providing care for a 50-year-old male patient who is receiving vancomycin therapy for a methicillin-resistant staphylococcus aureus infection. Short, uh, MRSA is what it's short for. He is suddenly complaining of a constant ringing in his ear. The nurse recognizes the symptom as which of the following side effects of vancomycin. A. Gastrointestinal toxicity. B. Nephrotoxicity. C. Thrombophlebitis or D. Ototoxicity. The correct answer is D. Ototoxicity. Rationale. Remember that a constant ringing in the ear indicates tinnitus. Tinnitus is also a sign of hearing loss, which indicates ototoxicity is occurring. Gastrointestinal toxicity is not normally noted in someone who is receiving vancomycin therapy. It is essential to report these findings to the healthcare provider immediately as the vancomycin doses may need to be adjusted or discontinued immediately to prevent permanent damage. 2. Measles Do you see the three C's of measles? Try saying that three times fast. The other term for measles is rubiola. Remember that measles is considered airborne. For strict patient, two bed rest. Cough is noted in someone with measles. Carissa is a formal term for stuffy nose or common cold. Use a cold mist vaporizer for the cough and carissa. Conjunctivitis is an infection or inflammation of the conjunctiva. Think of the I. Also, this does not start with the letter C, but fever is common with measles and sometimes complex spots may appear, which are small white spots that are noted inside the facial cheeks. Let's go over an NCLEX practice question for measles. NCLEX question number two. Nurse Jojo is providing care for a child and suspects that the child may have measles. Which signs and symptoms indicate measles and should be reported to the healthcare provider immediately? A. Carissa, conjunctivitis and fever. B. Cough and headache. C. Hyperkalemia and conjunctivitis. Or D. Fever and hypokalemia. The correct answer is A. Carissa, conjunctivitis, and fever. Rationale. 
carissa, conjunctivitis, and fever are clinical manifestations that could indicate measles and should be reported to the healthcare provider immediately. Cough and headache can be signs and symptoms of many diagnoses and would need further evaluation. Hyperkalemia and hyperkalemia would not indicate whether or not a patient has measles and can be eliminated. Mnemonic number three, Lyme disease, base a key Lyme pie. Nurses do not want a Lyme pie in their face. Nurses want to eat a Lyme pie. Facial nerve palsy occurs when the disease have to spread to the nervous system. Lyme disease is treatable and so is facial nerve palsy. Arthritis is the third and last stage of Lyme disease. Large joints become involved causing pain. Cardiac block is a symptom that occurs in the second stage of Lyme disease. This occurs several weeks following the bite. Erythema migrans is a rash that occurs in the first stage of Lyme disease. Associate the tick bite with Lyme disease. The end clicks will point out the typical ring-shaped rash that occurs with the tick bite leading to Lyme disease. Remember that the rash may not even come in the shape of the ring or where the bite site occurred. Symptoms of the rash can occur several days to months after bites. Let's go over an NCLEX practice question for Lyme disease. NCLEX question number three. A 21 years old patient presents to an urgent care clinic with a rash and complaints of flu symptoms. The nurse is examining the patient and notes that there is a bullseye rash located on the right ankle. This rash is noticed at which of the following? A. Facial nerve palsy, B, erythema migrans, C, cellulitis, or D, measles. The correct answer is B, erythema migrans. Rationale. Erythema migrans is one of the earliest signs of Lyme disease, which presents as a ring-shaped rash due to a tick bite. The rash may not even present as a ring shape, but that is usually the common shape finding. Recognizing one of the first signs of Lyme disease is essential to getting treatment in a timely and urgent manner. This usually includes antibiotics to prevent the later signs and symptoms from occurring, such as facial nerve palsy, arthritis, and cardiac block. We just went over the first three nursing mnemonics out of 100 nursing mnemonics that I created. If you want to download a sample for free, be sure to go to cutienurses.com slash start to join my email list and I'll send you 160 free digital flashcards. Don't forget to click the red subscribe button below. Mnemonic number four, canes. If a patient has a cane, get the patient cold. When instructing the patient to walk with a cane, teach him or her to use the cane on the opposite side of the affected leg. If the patient's right leg is injured, the cane would be placed on the left side. That does not sound too complicated, right? Let's go over an NCLEX practice question for canes. NCLEX question number four. The nurse is providing discharge instruction for a 59 years old male patient on how to use a cane properly. The patient is getting discharged for right knee injury. For safety measures, the patient should be advised of which of the following. A. Hold the cane in the right hand and move the right leg simultaneously. B. Hold the cane in the left hand and move the left leg simultaneously. C. Hold the cane in the right hand and move the left leg simultaneously. Or D, hold the cane in the left hand and move the right leg simultaneously. The correct answer is D, hold the cane in the left hand and move the right leg simultaneously. Rationale, because the patient's right knee is injured, the cane would be placed in the left hand. We can eliminate A and C right away. Remember that the cane should be used on the opposite side of the weak leg. In other words, place the cane on the stronger side. Now, we need to determine if the cane should be moved simultaneously with the strong or the weak leg. The cane should be moved simultaneously with the affected leg. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Hold the cane in the left hand and move the right leg simultaneously. This is to minimize pain and promote healing. On to mnemonic number five, Alzheimer's diagnosis. 
Everything starts with the letter A. Amnesia is partial or total memory loss. Anomia is the inability to recognize everyday objects. Apraxia is the inability to perform actions. Agnosia is the inability to process sensory information. Aphasia is the inability to formulate and comprehend a language. It can range from mild to severe. Let's go over an NCLEX practice question for Alzheimer. NCLEX question number five. Nurse Connie is providing care for a 70 year old patient diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. The patient looks at the clock and states that she cannot identify it. The nurse recognizes that this is which of the following Alzheimer's disease finding? A. Agnosia. B. Aphasia. C. Apraxia or D. Anomia? The correct answer is D. Anomia. Rationale. The patient is not able to correctly identify the clock, which indicates anomia, the inability to recognize everyday objects. Apraxia is the inability to perform actions such as writing or tying your shoes. Aphasia is the in inability to formulate and comprehend a language. An example of aphasia would be having difficulty forming complete sentences or including a makeup word into the sentence such as, I want to eat glee. Agnosia is the inability to process sensory information such as having difficulty recognizing familiar faces. Nursing mnemonics are so helpful when it comes to reviewing for the next generation NCLEX. So be sure to check out my top 100 nursing mnemonics for the NCLEX at cutienurses.com, which will help you prepare for your exam. And if you haven't already, remember to hit the red subscribe button. Your support by liking this video and sharing with your peers really means so much to me. Keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next video.